I'm about eight years old. My dad and I are standing at a sand dune overlooking a crowded beach. My dad turns to me and says, in 100 years, all of us will have been dead. That was a pretty dark thought for a Saturday at the beach, dad. This terrifying but memorable reflection taught me something very important. We all know how this will end. You will die, and so will everyone you love. Yet we all act as if it wasn't true. So here are four lessons that Halloween can teach us about death and about life. With countless wars, malnutrition and contagious disease, death was ever present in medieval times. No wonder they needed something to make their peace with it. And here comes the concept of memento mori, which is Latin for remember death. Artists in medieval times and later on in Renaissance used symbols to remind us about our fleeting existence, for example skulls or winged hourglasses. Despite how it may look, I don't think it was about scaring people. I think it was about taming the concept of death and giving people the sense of clarity and urgency. Whenever I get too caught up in worrying about what other people think of me or about work, I ask myself, given that I will die, is it worth my precious time on earth? More often than not, the answer is no. Mark Manson, to say that I'm a fan is a bit of an understatement, writes in his book, um, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. That awareness of our mortality is a great motivator to live life to the fullest and prioritize our values. Death is the one thing that all humans have in common. It's the one thing that makes us all equal. It's the one thing that makes life so precious. Because once it's gone, it's gone. So once we embrace the fragility of human life, we should ask ourselves, as the author of the book suggests, what's truly really important to us? What do we want to do with our limited time? We don't know how long we have, so we might as well focus on the things that truly matter to us. We're all fictional characters. According to Will Storr, our brain has highly selective memory. Our memories are malleable, they can be changed, distorted or even invented. And it goes even further than this. Our present behaviour is shaped by the narrative that our brain constructed about ourselves in the past. So here comes the idea of working a little bit on your superhero origin story or developing your alter ego. If we give our brain a heroic narrative, we might become a tiny bit more heroic. And having a positive backstory to your life, even if you experienced painful or difficult things, can have very positive psychological benefits. So every year if I decide to go to the trouble of getting myself a Halloween costume, I try to make sure it's a heroic, charismatic character, say Queen Amidala or Harley Quinn. I especially like characters that went through something difficult and emerged stronger as a result. It inspired me to think back to my life, and especially the parts that I did not enjoy as much, and try and reframe it as my superhero origin story. And suddenly all the high school dramas, whether just to prepare you to be more indifferent to people's opinions of you, or all the times you face rejections, whether to make you more perseverant in the pursuit of your dreams. If you don't want to work with your life story and weave it into something of a character development arc, you could pick an alter ego. And I usually pick a character that has all the qualities that I don't have, but I wish I did. So Harley Quinn. She's funny, she's confident, she's badass, all the things that I'm not. And I feel like maybe if I dress up as her a few years in a row, I'll get some of her qualities eventually. So as you pick a costume this year, pick something empowering. October, November is this time to watch everything around you slowly dying, hibernating. And the sudden beauty in the stillness of landscape and the way it submits to rhythms of nature. I had to learn to appreciate this beauty as somebody who prefers summer and spring. And also in life, I get really frustrated with myself when I feel like I'm not growing fast enough or when life forces me to slow down like this year when I fall sick for a while. Catherine May is a British author who beautifully compared the way the nature goes through those cycles of growth and hibernation to the ebb and flow of our life with happiness and hardship and success and failure. And her main point is that just as plants and animals accept and embrace winter, we should also accept times when things are hard and use them as periods for rest and reflection without any sense of internal pressure or rushing through it. Not every season of your life will be a highlight reel, despite what social media tells you. And it shouldn't be. By being humble and patient with yourself, we create space for growth and healing. You just have to trust that trees will blossom again.
Coming from Poland where All Saints Day, as we call Halloween, is a very quiet, serious and reflective celebration, I was amazed by El Día de los Muertos in Mexico. In Mexico, people meet to dance, eat and celebrate the life of their loved ones who passed away. This is a way to keep their memory alive and celebrate their contributions. The celebration feels happy and hopeful as people believe that the death is not the end and all we can do for now is be grateful for the time we had with people we loved, which I think is a very beautiful concept. Whenever I think of the people we already lost or my close friends who lost their loved ones, my immediate response is to run to hug my husband or just grab a phone and call my mom and dad. And I believe, I want to believe that death is just a transition to something we do not yet fully understand. But for now, this human life with all its imperfections, struggles and small daily miracles is all that we have which makes it so precious. Once you realize and acknowledge that every day can be your last, you know that every moment, no matter how small, is priceless. Every kiss with the person you love, every sunset, every time you get to taste your favorite ice cream. So let's make the most of it every second.